Hi everyone, it's Holly from Hand Printed here again. Um, today I'm going to show you how to um, design and print a repeat pattern for fabric or paper. I'm going to show you how to make a block out of two different materials here, depending on what you've got at home and what you can get your hands on. Um, but the basic design um, principle is the same. I've got a block here that I've carved. This is one of my favourite blocks. Um, and this is on a piece of mounted lino. It's got a bit stained now from, from lots of use. Before you use it, it looks like this. And it's a piece of traditional lino that's been melted, mounted onto a piece of MDF. Makes it really easy to print with because it's um, you can hold it and, and it carves beautifully. Here you can see I've got a quarter circle design. I've also got here a block that uses the same design principle, a quarter circle, but this time I've used Safe Print Polystyrene. Now you can buy these, we have these at hand printed um, as well as these blocks. Um, you can buy them in sheets or you can use the bases of um, frozen pizzas, sometimes have them, and packaging, rummage around to see if you can find any polystyrene. Even if it's a chunk of polystyrene, you can still use, um, use it to make these blocks. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. So whether you're printing with um, a piece of lino, either flat or mounted, or some polystyrene, the design remains the same. We want to start with a square of paper that is the same size as your block, whatever that may be. We're gonna fold it in half, corner to corner. What we're trying to do is create a quarter circle that will match up when you rotate your block. It's gonna print our block by rotating it to create a circle. We want all of these lines to match all the way around into a circle design. The way we do that is by folding our paper in half. And then I'm going to fold it over from this corner like that. So half again and then one more time. So from the corner outwards, then going to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to cut from, now this is a little tricky to see on the camera, but here is the original other corner of my um, paper. So I'm gonna cut from that corner straight across. Like that. And then I can open it up. And I've got my quarter circle curve. This should go from one corner of the block to the other. Like that. And now I'm going to draw this circle onto my block. Like that. You can do the same for your polystyrene, just make sure you press lightly not to dent the block too much because they're going to sharpen your print. Okay, so I've got my first semicircle or quarter circle. Fold it back up again using the same lines and then snip another section off a little way in, however far you want, but we're gonna go along a few times. So I'm gonna take, I don't know, about a centimeter and a half off this time. Open it back up. Got a smaller quarter circle. That goes onto my block, starting from the same corner as before, and I'm gonna mark where um, the paper comes up to. Same again, another snip. Onto the block and draw again. One more time. You can do this in small, smaller increments if you want. The more you do, the more detail you'll get. And then this gets a little bit fiddly when I get to this stage. draw it onto my block. Okay, so here you can see I've got four quarter circle lines going around my block. Um, you can trace those onto your polystyrene or onto your lino block, whichever one you have. Um, and this just means that we know when we fill these um, areas with design, we know that this line is going to meet with this line. This is going to meet here. This line's going to meet here. And these two corners will meet 
when we print our repeat, giving it a continuous um, pattern feel. If we don't draw these lines in and we just start designing, we're gonna get jagged edges and things aren't gonna match up. So this is a surefire way of getting them to match up. So now we're ready to fill in our design. Sometimes um, you'll do half a shape on this side to match up with the half a shape it's going to meet on the other side. So if you're going to do a circle, you do half here and half there. But other than that, you can fill it in with whatever you like, knowing that it's going to meet up and make a full pattern altogether. I'm going to start by drawing in some pattern in this largest band that I've got here. This top corner as well is going to make um, its own pattern because this corner will join up to make its own small circle. So make sure that whatever you do in this corner is just going to make up um, an interesting shape there. So if I just do a couple of petally shapes when this corner joins, we're going to get them all radiating out from that point. So just be aware of what's happening here as well as what's happening in this section. This ends up uh, to be quite a nice little design surprise at the end to see what you get. So this block, our lino block, is now ready to be carved. Um, I like to use these tools, a Japanese set um, of lino and wood carving tools that work really well. We have those at hand printed. I also love to use these file tools. You can get a little bit more detail um, in those. Can you see on the camera? I'm not sure. You... Oh, there we go. You can see how tiny um, these are. So you can use those to get some really nice detail as well. So this block is ready to be carved. We're going to treat our um, polystyrene block a little differently. Um, you don't need any carving tools at all. So it's much easier to do at home um, with the limited materials that you may have. Um, for making our design on this block, we're going to need two pencils, a sharp one, the nice um, freshly sharpened point and a blunt one. We're going to use the sharp um, pencil to scratch the design into our block. You can see I've already got my lines there which are lightly scratched. We're going to use a sharp pencil to puncture through um, the surface of the polystyrene. And then we're going to use our blunt pencil to work into those lines, widen them up, um, soften up those um, edges, and then to push down any areas that we don't want to print. Because we're printing these blocks in relief, which means rolling the ink over the surface of the top, we want the areas um, left raised to print colour, and we want to push down anything that we don't want to print. So I'm going to start by doing my design with my sharpened pencil, breaking the surface, doing little scratchy lines um, to break it up. Okay, so I've got all my lines scratched in. It's tricky to see in the light because this is um, obviously just white. Um, you can see where I've scratched my lines in with my sharp pencil. I'm now done with my sharp pencil. I'm going to go in with my blunt pencil and widen those lines. Be careful not to go through all the way um, to the back. You just want to push um, those lines down to make them deeper. Okay, so now I've got widened lines. Um, the edges are a little smoother as well where I've pushed it down. It's just made the design more defined. The next thing I want to do is, is decide which areas I want to print and which areas I don't want to print. It's easier to have more raised areas than push down areas for the structural integrity of the block. Um, anything that I push down with my pencil now is going to print um, white. If I print on white paper, everything else is going to be inked up. So just push the sections down. Smaller sections work better than larger sections. It's just easier and smush them out of the way. The edges might get a little frazzled, but 
that's nothing to worry about. Another nice thing you can do is use the sharp pencil again just to push down um, some dots and small detail in your block. Okay, so our blocks are now ready to print, whether you've um, worked in lino or on polystyrene, you'll have your carved block or you'll have your um, press down block. Um, a top tip for printing in this method is to um, copy the arc of the print of the design onto the back of your block. That way, when you're printing, you'll know which way round it goes and you won't accidentally have one in the wrong space, which I have done and I wouldn't recommend. Um, OK, so for this one, our curve's going from this corner to this corner. So I'm just going to sketch that out really loosely on the background there so the curve is this part okay so that's now ready to ink up I'm going to be using a textile screen printing ink even though we're going to be block printing um, I'm using permaset aqua textile screen printing ink in rose which is a really nice pink you can use um, ink pads if you want to print with ink pads you can use those and they work really really well Fabric paint you can use and you can ink these up with a sponge. You can use ordinary relief printing ink and roll it on. Anything that you've got that's lying around, absolutely have a go. This is what I'm using today. This is what we use in the hand printed studio a lot. It works really, really well. We also sometimes use the Speedball ready mixed um, screen printing ink for fabric as well. I'm also going to be using a textile roller. Um, these are perfect for if you're using a screen printing ink to block print with. And um, this one's already inked up. You can see it's got a little bit of a texture um, on the roller that just means it's not going to slip around in that ink it's almost like a spongy texture but it's not absorbent it just makes it really easy to print onto textiles with so i'd recommend grabbing one of these if this is something you want to do a lot of if you're using an ordinary relief printing ink you can just use an ordinary roller or ink up what using whatever you've got i've got a little bit of ink on my tray and i'm just going to roll it out so my roller is nicely evenly coated and then a magazine page is perfect or a piece of newspaper to lay under while you ink up your block. This would be exactly the same if I was using my mounted lino. So just cover your block in a nice thin uh, layer of ink until you, your whole block is covered. Then I've got some cotton here and I've got it pinned down onto a padded surface, which is a blanket stretched over a board. If you haven't got a padded surface, you can lay down a towel or some thick fabric weighted down in the corners. It just helps to get a nice even print having some padding underneath. Okay, so I can see my arc there. But you can also kind of see through these blocks because the polystyrene is so thin. Place it down. Just press all over the back. If I was using my mounted block, I would be doing exactly the same thing. Just pushing down on the back with the flat of my hand. Make sure you get the whole thing. There we go, and there's my first print. You can then ink up the block again. Okay, and you can see my arc. I'm just going to line it up and print next to it. Different inks will print in different ways. Um, the Permis Aqua Rose is a fairly pale colour when printed like this. Others are stronger, they have different consistencies so they'll print differently. Yeah, there we go. So you can see how the pattern is going to match up really nicely. You can get a reasonable amount of detail in these polystyrene blocks. It's surprising the amount of detail that you can get. But you'll be able to get even more from a sheet of lino. So if you're using the method, the same method in lino, you can really go to town with the kind of detail and patterns that you can get. But if you're doing this with children, you can do any kind of abstract patterns and shapes. But because it's repeated, whatever you do, 
comes together to form a really interesting pattern altogether. You can see this circle of circles meets up. I've got my zigzag line, which sort of is a sun effect. I've got this sort of fan in the center and I've got these in each corner. As I continue to print, I'll start getting this pattern matching up to get another a nice level of detail. You can see just on the edge um, of the image here how this pattern joins up to make an interesting um, kind of secondary pattern and we get this lovely sort of scalloped diamond shape. I'm gonna have one over here as well, where the circles meet. So it starts to be become a little more than the original circle and, and grow to create a really interesting design. Once you've made these blocks as well, you don't have to stick to just printing in circles. I really like to use these making arcs. So instead of doing the bottom half of the circle, I could have arcs on top of each other like this, which is really nice, or stagger it. Sometimes I like to join them up to make a wavy line. Can I continue the line all the way around and just continue to add them so it sort of breaks up? You can print them diagonally sort of in brick fashion to create a really interesting fan design. There's all sorts of different layouts. If you have a look on our hand printed blog, we've got lots of ideas for how to use blocks like this and also lots of other things on there. So definitely take a look um, if you would like some inspiration. If you have a go at this, either on Lino or on Polystyrene, using different inks, different materials, we'd love to see what you are getting up to. Please um, send us a message on Instagram or Facebook um, and tag us. We would love to see what you are doing at home.